have a number of options to turn off the uh, session limit. The first one and the most simple one on a standalone machine is to run tsconfig.msc and that will launch the remote desktop session host configuration utility. Or if you want to do it the long way around you'll find it under administrative tools, remote desktop services and there it is there, the remote desktop session host configuration utility. Now the bit that's affecting us is to restrict each user to a single session and it's set to yes. So right click properties and untick the option to restrict each user. Apply. OK. Job done. And it's as simple as that. Another option on a standalone machine is to enforce this via registry. So I'm going to run regedit to go into the registry and the key we want is a HK local machine system current control set control terminal server and you'll see there is a D word value that called F single session per user At the minute it's set to the value of 1 which means that the restriction is in place if you open that up and change that value to 0 You can have multiple sessions. Click OK, and that will take effect straight away. Close that down. Another option on a standalone machine is to do it via the local policy. Uh, you can launch the local policy editor by running gpedit.msc. Let's pull that out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And you will find it in computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components. Remote Desktop Services, Remote Desktop Session Host, Connections. And over in the right hand window you'll see there is a Restrict Remote Desktop Services to users for a single Remote Desktop Services session. Now the wording is a little bit ambiguous because it's typical of Microsoft, you need to disable the policy to turn it on because it's a restriction. If you disable the restriction, you enable it. Disabled. Apply. OK. Now it being a policy, that will take effect straight away. You'll have to wait either a maximum term of two hours or a reboot, so I'm going to force the policy to take effect straight away by running gp update space forward slash force and that will refresh both the user policy and the computer policy. That's just done. Again, that's fine for a single standalone machine. However, if you're in a domain environment and you want to enforce this on multiple machines, you can do it via domain group policy. On your domain controller, run gpmc.msc or the group policy management console. Remember, this is a computer policy, so you'd normally link it to an OU that contains computers. But this is just my test environment, so I'm going to create a new policy and link it to the root of the domain. So it'll affect all the computers in that domain. Call it something sensible. Click OK. And now we're going to edit the policy we've just created. OK, so computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, Windows components. and it's remote desktop services remote desktop session host connections find the restriction and if you're watching earlier on the local group policy it's exactly the same you need to disable the policy to allow users to make multiple sessions apply OK Again, there's been a policy, it won't apply straight away, it'll either be a maximum of two hours or a reboot, so we're going to force the policy by dropping to command line and running a GP update space forward slash force. And that's how policies updated. Those are just some of the methods that you can use to enable multiple RDP sessions. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peaknetlife.com.